Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this particular video, we're going to go through an introduction to using R Markdown, which is a markup language, or I guess you could say a markdown language inside R Studio that is beneficial for making reports and also for consolidating your research analysis into a coherent document that can be shared, like I said, via PDF, via HTML, or even via Word. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. So I'm inside R Studio, and in my upper left-hand corner, I'm going to have here my code for my actual information for my R markdown of uh, output. In the lower corner, we have our console here. That's not too critical for our purposes today. And off to the right is where we're going to be seeing the output from our code for the R markdown. So as I mentioned, R markdown is used for being able to combine text, plots, and code in one place that it could be outputted as an HTML document, as a PDF document, and or as a Word document. So it's a great way to, like I said, put all your, all your information in one place for communication purposes. Basically, it's for reporting. And so what we're gonna do now is, is that we're gonna go through a simple example here where we um, look at this Cove. So at the top, normally when you want to open R, R Markdown file, you want to click on File, then click on New, and select R Markdown. And so the first thing that it's going to, it's going to have like a little screen where you could do it um, through the, the drop down box, but we're going to put it in manually this time. So the first thing at the top is always going to be, it's called a YAML header. And so what you put in here is really up to you, it's, it's highly flexible, but it's common to put like a title author, the date. You probably absolutely have to have this in line five, which is the uh, output HTML out the output. So for our purposes, we're going to make an HTML document, but also keep in mind, you can make a PDF underscore document or a Word underscore document as well. And then this last one is an optional one that I need, and this is for printing a table, which is something we'll get to towards the end of the video, perhaps. Maybe not this video, but a future video. So lines one through seven here is called a YAML header. So you can see here in line one, we have these three dashes, and then you start putting in information right here. Uh, again, there's documents on the internet for this. Uh, title, then colon, then you put your title in quotation marks. For the, output in, for the output, you don't need quotation marks. And again, like I said several times already, this DF underscore print is for a table that I wanna make, hopefully later on in this video. So if I were to actually output this now, you're not gonna see too much. So it wants me to save it first. You probably can't see that part. So, okay. And so if you look off to your right, you can see that we have our title. The author is ERT in the year. That's pretty much it so far. Now, as we continue our journey here, we're going to now show you how to put in headings. So for headings, there's several different ways to do this, but let me show you this. All right, so in line nine, I just have the beginning of a heading of a paragraph. So headings, I'm just gonna type in something here, how to make headings. And so that's just a paragraph. There's nothing fancy being manipulated to, with that. Now, in lines 11 through 16, I have here heading one, heading two. If you're familiar with HTML, it's the same ideal. In fact, you can use HTML code inside our markdown. In other words, there's more than one way to do this. You can use HTML code. You can use, this is like the default for our markdown here. And you can also use LaTeX if you're familiar with that language as well. And I'm sure there might be other things I'm missing. But if you look here in lines 11 through 16, you do a hashtag space. That's just like the highest level of a heading. Two hashtags gives you a level two, three hashtags, et cetera, et cetera. You can have as many as you want. So I'm going to demonstrate what this looks like. So keep your eyes on the, on the off to the right here. And so you can see each time our headings get a little bit smaller, a little bit smaller, and we go on for who knows how many headings that this thing can do. Also notice this right here is our text right here, how to make headings. So this is like a paragraph. So if you're familiar with um, HTML, this would be like a P, uh, a P tag, if you will. And then we get our heading one through heading six after that. 
So this is very, very basic stuff that we're doing right now. So next we're gonna go through some font manipulation here. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you look at line 18, I just have a heading, a level one heading called font manipulation. In line 20, I show you how to do bold. In line 22, italics. In line 24, how to do strike through. So again, this is not that deep. And I also want to repeat again without trying to bore you, this is not the only way this can be coded. You can also use HTML. You can also use LaTeX. You can, you can use a combination of these. In other words, I can do like my headings in HTML. I could do like my paragraphs in LaTeX and I could do something else and something else. There's multiple different ways that this can be done. It's a highly flexible document producing for, uh, application here. So I knit this real quick. And so you can see font manipulation, that's a level one. And then we got bold here. I know that's kind of small. Then we got italics and then we have strike through. Trust me, that's there. I hope you can see that. Very, very small, but it's there. All right, so we've learned that so far. So next, excuse me, make some more space here. All right. Now we're gonna go through some basic features here and have a little bit of fun, make something a little bit more complex. So let me see if I can share all this with you. Okay, so this looks ugly and complicated, but let's just see if we can go through this step by step. In line 26, I just have a heading one. That's all I have there called basic features. Next, I have a paragraph here. This really is one paragraph. I say, hello world. That's what I'm saying here, then comma, my blog. And so with this, I'm putting it in italics right here, is educational research techniques. All right, so this is in square brackets. And next to it, I have a link. So what I'm doing here is I'm making a hyperlink. I'm, I'm, it's gonna print out educational research techniques, but then there's gonna, it's gonna have a link inside it where when you click on it, it'll take you to the stuff in the parentheses right here, educationalresearchtechniques.com. And so that's what we're having here. And then the last line of code here is using some law tech here. I told you you can mix them. So the dollar sign tells our markdown that we're beginning some law tech. Again, this is standard if you're familiar with this language. And I'm changing the color here. So the color is becoming red. That's what I'm changing it to. This is kind of the function for that, if you will. And then after that, I have here the text, which is color. So I'm changing the color to red. So the word is color and it's going to be red basically. And that's how it's going to work out. So this will make more sense if you see it as an output. So again, I don't know if I explained this, but at the top of the panel here, there's a little button called knit. If you click on knit, that's how you actually make the document. So I'm gonna click on this now. And so if you look at the bottom of our thing here, you can see here we got our our level one heading, basic features. Then we have our little words, hello world. And then I have my blog in italics. I hope you can see that. And then here I have my hyperlink educational research techniques. Notice how the link is not here because it's kind of embedded in the word. And again, if you're familiar, if you've been dealing with, you know, HTML and, and coding stuff, you know what I'm talking about here. And also notice how I have changed the color. So now the color is red right here, just like I indicated using my law tech right here. So you can see that there's really no limit to what you can do here. And there's so much more that I could cover in addition to what I'm doing right now. But this is kind of to get you started. We learned about our headings here, font manipulation and the basic features. But let's see what else we can do here. Now there is something we haven't talked about too much yet and that's actual R coding. And so that's what we're gonna do next. So here's how you embed actual R code. Let me see if I can make this clear. So if you wanna make a little grayish area like this, there's two ways. If you look up here, you'll see a little button here that's C. If you click on that, it'll drop down and you can insert a code using it that way. That's one way to do it. The other way is how I just did it. You can create it yourself. So you do three back ticks. If you look closely, you'll see three back ticks, then curly braces, you put R inside it, then close it out. Then you press enter and do you close and you finish it by making three more back ticks. So let me show you. One, two, three, that's three back ticks. And what I mean by these little back ticks here is 
this is the uh, the on your keyboard is the is the key right next to the number one. So then we do our R like this, and you can see here that I already have the grayish color means I'm really close, and so then I can close it out. One, two, three. And so now I have another box of R code right there. So you can make it manually. So in lines 30 to 32, in line 30, I have the beginning of my chunk. In line 32, I close out my chunk. And in the middle, I have a data set called empty cars. So if I knit this again, what's going to happen is that I'm going to print out all the data from the empty cars data frame. That's essentially what's going to happen. Empty cars is a data set that's already in R. You don't have to load any packages for it. It's just already there. So I click on this. All right. And so now you can see we have our level two heading here, sample code, just like in line 29. Then we have our data set empty cars and everything got printed out right here. Again, this data set is already installed in basic R. You don't have to do anything to create it and it's right there. All right. And of course, there's several other things you can do here. Let me show you how you can embed code into actual text. So I'm going to delete this because I don't need this. And let me just move this up a little bit so you can see it. Okay, so if you look at line 35 here, what's really new here is this guy right here. This has a back tick, empty cars, back tick. Again, when I say back tick, I'm talking about the key next to the number one right above the tab button on your keyboard. And so what's going to happen is that this is going to appear as R code, like, like, as like grayish color. So, you know, I'm sure if you read books, they always, um, when they're using code in a sentence, they often make it appear differently so you can tell it's code. This is kind of what's happening right here. And so let me show, let me run this for you so it makes more sense. All right, so it's going to be at the bottom. I know you can barely see that. But if you look way down here at the bottom, you can see it right down there. It has a little grayish box around it. This indicates to the reader that that is referring to code. It is not just empty cards as like a regular word. So that's the benefit of doing that right there. You can see that. And all this is taking place because of these back ticks here around empty cars. That's the beauty of that. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. You can also uh, run code in line. Let me demonstrate that for you. And so let's see here. Okay. In line 38, here's what's happening. We have these back ticks again. So I have back tick, then R, and now I'm calculating the mean of miles per gallon in the MT cars data set. So you can run code in an actual paragraph. Now this is very, very valuable because if your data changes, you don't have to update the values in a paragraph. I'm sure if you're like me, in the past, you would run code and you would try to avoid putting numbers in your paragraphs because you'd have to go back and, and modify them manually. But knowing how to do this, this R, this back score R um, technique that I'm showing you here, now your data is automatically updated and you don't have to go through and manually fix things. So let me show you what that looks like. And so again, it's way down at the bottom, but you can see here that here is inline R code 20.0906.25. And so again, if my data ever changes, this value will automatically be updated and I don't have to deal with it ever again. So for example, let me say instead of miles per gallon, let's say I put weight instead. Now when I run this, it'll automatically change. So now it's 3.21 because I'm using a different column. You have no idea how much time this can save you. For those of you who know what it's like to have to make reports. Okay, so our next little trick here, we're almost done, is we're going to learn how to make a table. So this is gonna be our final trick for today and we're gonna wrap this up. All right, so let me explain what's going on here. We have some stuff here, echo and messages. So echo false means that we don't want to see the act. We want to see the output of the data, but we don't want to see like, like, um, we don't want to see the code. That's what echo false means. Message false means we don't want to like see any kind of messages. You know, if you, if you, uh, want to use a, a library pack, a package, excuse me, 
is sometimes there's a lot of messages at the beginning, like, okay, we're gonna mask this, we're gonna mask that, etc. Again, if you've used R before, you know what I'm talking about. Message false turns it off. It's not that that's not important, it's that we don't want that in our report because our report, maybe we're sharing this with people who are not technical. And so we gotta make sure our report is clean so that there's no confusion. So also take a look, we're going to load the live, uh, the deep dplyr package for that. Um, that's what we're gonna do here because we're gonna be using some tools down here. So we're using MT cars. Again, I'm assuming you're familiar with R here and we're gonna filter, we want, ge we want gears that equal four we want horsepower or HP to be greater than 110. And we're going to knit this inside something called cable. So this is where we're going to make a table to show this output. And so that was why at the top of the code here in the YAML header, I put this DF underscore print because I want to use that to show you how you can make beautiful tables inside um, our markdown. So let's take a look at this. And so down here at the bottom, you can see this beautiful table is almost APA ready here for those of you who are into academic type research. So we have a heading here making a table. We could put this underneath if we want it. Um, you can see here that there's two cars in the MT car data set that have a gear that is equal to four and a horsepower greater than 110. And so once we had that, we just pulled that. So in other words, in this table up here, this is an unformatted table. So it's just, it's just data. When we filter for gears that equals four and horsepower uh, being greater than 110, there are two cars left, and you can see that this is a much more beautiful table down here at the bottom. And of course, you can manipulate this as you desire. You can put in, um, what do you call it? Um, you know, the, 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 under, the, the heading, the subheadings and everything, and, and you can put in titles and everything, and you can like figure one, figure two. These are all things that we can explore in the future, but you're getting a taste of the potential of our markdown in this particular video. So let's go back and try to review what we talked about. So in this video, what we did was, is we exposed ourselves to some basic tools and techniques inside using R Markdown, which is a, a tool inside R Studio. So we looked at how to make headings. We discussed how to manipulate fonts. So bold, italics, yes, you can make fonts different sizes as, as well. We didn't deal with that yet. We made a, a little simple example here where we showed you how to insert hyperlinks, how to hyperlink text, how to change the color of text. Again, I wanna reiterate that there's more than one way to do everything I'm talking about here, but this is just the way I chose to do it. We looked at some sample R code. We also learned how to use R code in an actual sentence. So again, this allows you to update things automatically without having to go back and fix everything that you type in there. And then lastly, we showed you how to make a beautiful, nice, clean table using the, the cobble. That's this guy here in line 46. So knitter, cobble, that's it. And so uh, there's nothing special about this, this, uh, these two dots here. It's just telling it to specifically use cobble from the knitter package, that's it. And so with this knowledge, you can now make documents that are very, very clean, very, very nice looking and that are ready to be shared with um, your people who need them. I also need to mention that if you choose to, you can also knit your R Markdown files as Microsoft Word files, which allows you to manipulate them even more if that's what you need to do um, to, to help you out. Because you know, our, our studio is not very good with like checking grammar and spell check and all that kind of stuff like that. It has some spell check ability, but not much more than that. So you can start here, get the majority of your document set up inside our studio, and then you can export it as a Word file and finish that process inside Microsoft Word. But that's something we can discuss in a future video. So I would like to thank you for watching this video. My name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you again for watching and you take care.